So pollution of all different kinds. Pollution of all different kinds. And trash also. Okay, so trash is an interesting idea when you come to the actual solar system, right? We are actually, there's a whole other field of techno signatures, which are things in the solar system. What if somebody came by a billion years ago, you know, and left some stuff, right? So the earth has been showing biosignatures for billions of years. And, you know, a species like us looking at our level, looking at earth would have been able to know that earth had life on it, had a biosign, had a biosphere for billions of years. So maybe somebody sent something by, you know, a, a half a billion years ago. So, um, this idea of looking, say, at the moon for artifacts is that have been there for a long time is something that people, a number of people are doing. We're just working on a paper where we just calculated, this was super fun, we calculated how long would the lunar lander exist on the moon before micrometeorites just chewed it down, right? How long would you be able to land on the moon and go, oh, look, there's, you know, there, somebody was here and left some debris. Um, so there's this process called gardening, which is just the micrometeorite, constant rain mm -hmm. of micrometeorites, you know, and that's what, where you get the lunar regolith, that fine powder on the moon is because of this gardening. And it turns out it is literally hundreds of millions to billions of years. Oh, nice. That the, yeah, that the lunar lander will be visible. Oh, so we should be able to find artifacts. Yeah. If there's art, if there are artifacts on the, and people have proposed doing this with, um, artificial intelligence. We have, you know, the moon has been mapped down to like a couple of meters with various probes and all that data is sitting there. So have, why not use machine learning to like look through all those things and look for anything that looks not like the lunar surface. And they did a test program where they gave it, they gave the computer, you know, sort of like, I don't know, 50 miles around the Apollo 11 or Apollo, maybe it was the Apollo 17 site. And it instantly was able to pull out the lander. I mean, the whole task of looking for anomaly, something that looks not like the lunar surface, you make it sound obvious, but it's not exactly obvious. Like an anomalies is really not, I mean, detect something that doesn't look right about this room. Yeah. It's, it's actually really difficult. Really difficult. It's really difficult. And it's, you know, what's cool, it's a really information theoretic kind of mm -hmm. proposal. You really have to use information theory to say like, what's the background? What's, you know, well, how do I define something that I can say that looks weird? So, yeah, maybe when you're looking at a spectrograph or something like, it's still, it's still like, it's going to look really weird potentially. Like we're kind of, ex we're kind of hypothesizing all the things that humans would build. Right. And how do we detect that? Right. But there could be really weird stuff. That's why there's this emphasis now on these agnostic uh, signatures, right? So um, actually disequilibrium is a nice one. One way to define life is it is a system that is far from equilibrium, right? It's alive, right? Because mm -hmm. as soon as it dies, it turns into, it goes back to equilibrium. And so you can look at all chemicals in an atmosphere, even if you don't know whether, these could be chemicals that you have no idea whether or not they have anything to do with life. But the degree of disequilibrium, the degree to which they show that that atmosphere has not, you know, the chemicals have not all kind of like just gone down to, a, you know, they've all reacted away to an equilibrium state. You can actually tell that in very general ways using what's called a Gibbs, the Gibbs free energy. And that, that's kind of a signature. Like if you see an atmosphere that is wildly out of equilibrium, you know, that indicates that there's some, there's something happening on that planet, biosphere or technosphere that is pumping gases, you know, into the, um, into the atmosphere that is keeping the whole system from relaxing. 